Hi everyone, Kim here at Abundant Life Tarot. Thank you so much for joining me. So it's been a while since we've done this. I want to get back into sharing with you some of the decks that I have been loving or using or really just having some beautiful epiphanies with month over month. So that's what we're doing. We are returning back the faves video. Um, it's had different changes over the years that I've had my channel. It was used to be monthly faves and it became death like, you know, month in reviews. And I haven't landed on a title yet. So whatever title that you see there um, it, before you clicked on this video, that's probably what we're going to be rolling with. I, I'm still 50 50 on if I want to just call it like monthly faves or month in review. I haven't decided even at the time of this recording. But this is a look at my month of January and so this update is not just going to be about the decks that I was loving and using in the month of January it also is going to be a part of giving you updates on my death year I'm doing a death year 2024 so I'll be sharing with you on that and also giving you some things to ponder in your own collecting journeys so um, yeah it'll be the video will be time stamped so you can jump to my depth year discussion also jump to what did I gift myself for my birthday that's coming up in February I did pre-order a deck so I do talk about that in the piece with the depth year portion of this video and then the next portion of the video will be just simply decks I have three oracle decks three tarot decks that I want to talk to you all about. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's get started. I cannot wait to share with you what I've been working with in January. So I wanted to discuss with you all my depth year, just give a quick update to it. So I announced in a couple of videos back that I am doing a depth year for 2024. That is where I am abstaining from purchasing decks. I've given myself a $250 budget for the year and I don't plan on utilizing that budget in full. And here's why. I have a beautiful collection of decks. I'm sitting at 204 decks, which include 83 Tarot, 116 Oracle decks, and then five Lenormand decks. And I feel good. I have plenty to learn and to study and to decide if I want to keep those decks in my collection. So I am very much in a full moon phase of my collecting journey. I don't necessarily feel the need to acquire anything because I have the decks I'm planning to work with for any other types of readings I want to explore this year. For example, I want to do more exploration in ancestral type of readings. So I have decks that are ready for that. And I have my true crime collection, deck collection on point. And, you know, I've got my career and love reading decks all raring to go. So I don't need to add anything else to my collection. I'm curious to hear from you all. What phase of your collecting journey are you in at the moment? In my opinion, I like to think that collecting habits um, ebb and flow. Sometimes you are very much all in. You are, you know, new to the game. You are wanting to add to your collection or maybe you're taking on a whole new study of Tarot and you or Oracle. And so you need to add in your acquisition phase, right? Or, and that also could speak to waxing moon phase. Maybe you've had a collection for a while, but you are learning something new and you're just feeling the call to add to your collection. Or you could be like me at the moment, which is full moon phase. Or you could be at a point of destashing, the waning moon phase, where you are giving away, selling decks, you know, and not really trying to add to the collection. An example for me for my full moon phase is I am getting ready to identify decks that I would like to gift to people that leave space in my, leave room in my collection for additional decks.
So for an example of what I did in January is I gifted my Clarity Tarot deck to a friend who was looking for decks that had keywords on it. She's learning Tarot and she was getting ready to do a reading for a loved one. And I had suggested to her that Tarot decks with the keywords will really help you in learning how to read the cards. And eventually you may decide you don't want a deck with keywords, you move on to something else. But it's just nice to have in your collection as a means of studying the tarot. So I give to her that one and another tarot deck that I had that had keywords. And that opened up room for a new deck. The new deck that I pre-ordered was the Chiro McKetty's uh, Mystic Palette Tarot, the Muted Edition. So I ordered that through Amazon. It's supposed to drop on February 8th, 2024, which is two days before my February 10th birthday. And I was like, I've been wanting this one. I went back and forth on whether or not to get the um, indie version because that's still available as of the time of the re this recording. And I really could see why people would gravitate towards the indie version, but due to my budget of $250 for the year and liking Llewellyn decks, um, I do appreciate their card stock. I just decided to go ahead and, and pre-order the mass market edition. So that's what I did. So I gifted the Clarity Tarot and I am now adding to my collection once it is released the Mystic Palette Tarot. So I'm looking forward to receiving it. My friend was super excited to get her decks that I gifted her. And I still feel very much full, very much full. So for me, this depth year is going to be about deepening my connections with some of my favorite decks that I have, as well as getting to know some of the ones that I got, but I just never got it around to learning about it. So do me a favor in the comments section. Let me know the moon phase of collecting that you're in at the moment. And let me know what decks that you felt called to gift or sell. And then the ones that you are bringing into your collection. Or just share your thoughts and feels on that. I want to hear from you. The first deck I want to talk to you all about is the Super Lenaris Tarot. And this is the first edition. It has like the little little booklet here with the key meanings. I don't usually consult this. I just keep this in the box, keep this on the shelf. But let me show you how banged up this deck is. This is a deck that is well loved, well used, and it is still available for, it's still in print. So if you are curious about a deck that will really work for you, I would suggest this one. Um, it was once gold gilding <laughs> and it's not anymore because I've used it that much. It is bent. You can see the bent, the bent line here. Here's the nine of pentacles. Here's the hanged one. Ace of cups, the magician. I use this deck a lot in client readings, uh, mostly, primarily for wands, because it just reads so well. It reads for all types of readings, career, life purpose, love, relationship issues, um, choices you have to make. It really just reads well for me. And I will eventually get a backup copy because this one is getting quite worn, but I'm not in any major rush at this point since it is available. I love this death card. This death card is everything because this is a forest fire and forest fires burn and clear and make way for new beginnings, right? So that's why it resonates deeply with me. So that is the Super Lenaris Tarot. If I have um, full unboxings of the decks that I mentioned in this video, I'll be sure to link them in the description box. Super Lenaris. This is, it's a great one. I used it a lot in January. So the next deck I want to talk to you about is The Spirit Within Tarot by Stephen Bright. 
I use this a lot primarily for my New Year's readings that I like to do. And so in December and January, that's what I was mostly doing was New Year's readings. And this is a go-to deck for me. It has a great little guidebook. It is produced by Red Feather, which is a subsidiary of Schiffer. And so I've been having this deck for years, for years, and I adore it. And yes, it is glossy, but for some reason it's held up beautifully over the years. Look. And it has silhouettes, which could work for a lot of people, right? And it's just an easy deck to read, in my opinion. Here are the card backs. They are reversible. Queen of Pentacles. Very contemporary. Five of Swords. But really gets the messages across. Fully illustrated. Ace of Wands. Page of Pentacles. Eight of Swords. Knight of Pentacles. Six of Swords. Nine of Pentacles. So, silhouettes might not be everybody's thing, but for me, I don't know why, it just works. It just works. And it, for some reason, it works really well in my client New Year's readings. I use it for New Year's readings for myself as well. I'll do like a 12 month spread, like a forecast, pulling cards for each of the months. And it, it does the trick. And I've talked about it recently because I'm in that energy of New Year. So naturally this is the deck I go to year over year and it always delivers for me, always. So if you are new to Tarot, it could work really well for you. If you're seasoned, it also can work well for you. It does come with this cool little guidebook. So yeah, The Spirit Within Tarot by Stephen Bright is one that I have been loving forever, but particularly in the month of January. So the last Tarot deck I want to share with you is one that's been recently added to my collection and I for sure will link in the description box the full flip through. This is the African American Modern Black Tarot deck that I purchased off of Etsy from Street Priestess Tarot. The shop owner is Nicole and I also have her uh, Low Country Gullah Tarot deck which I love as well but I have been using this as well for myself for like readings for a friend as well as readings for clients and it has been delivering the goods here's the queen of cups card backs it's been excellent in readings and i really am enjoying it it has a glossy finish but i don't mind that at all and I don't know. I've just been really feeling it. And my clients, I think, really are enjoying it as well. Um, you, I, So far, in the month of January, I've been using it in mostly like um, either career readings or love readings. Like career type questions or readings surrounding relationships. Like a marriage kind of relationship. Like marriage issues. And in both scenarios, whether we were asking about a potential career change or uh, overcoming a relationship issue in a marriage, this deck has been coming through. So check out the full flip through that I have done for this deck in the description box because I do go through all of the cards and show you all of them. But yeah, I have been feeling this one and I plan to work with it some more in February and beyond. There you have it. Now the next deck I want to talk to you about is Oracle. So now we're moving into my Oracle decks, the faves that I had this month. And this is the Sacred Creators Oracle. I'm beating myself up because this is one that I should have mentioned 
in the 2024 edition of the decks that I um, use for career and money readings, but like business owner readings. Because let me tell you, for readings for myself pertaining to such questions, I do use this deck as well as reading for clients. And I have the indie version. Let me see if I can grab it. I thought I would be ready. I do have the indie version. Okay. This is what I got first many years before. And then I got this one to work with all the time for client readings and for just reading quick readings on the go for myself. Now, the truth be told, I use the mass market ones a lot more than the original Sacred Creators Oracle. But what's cool about the Sacred Creators Oracle is it comes with this massive guidebook and it is just chock full of great information spreads. Just Chris Ann Donnelly is amazingly brilliant when it comes to deck creations and writing her guidebooks. And it just, I'm happy to have it in my collection, but I will be honest and forthright that really the mass market suits me just fine because the guidebook is just as sufficient, really. I mean, it doesn't go as in depth as the, the big book here, but it works, <laughs> you know, it works. Just so you know, you're not missing much if you don't have the indie version, but if you have the indie version, you are blessed. <laughs> How about that? And uh, let me show you. Here is the, let me just see if there's any comparison here. This is the Sacred Creators Oracle. It is almost, actually, almost the same size with the mass market being slightly bigger. But what's cool about the indie version is it's got this matte gold gilding. But again, it's now become for me more of a collector's item than anything because the workhorse in this little duo here is the mass market. And it's so much so that I forgot to mention it in that video, the most recent live stream I've done about the 10 decks that I recommend for career and business and money matter readings. I forgot this one because it was, the cards are on my reading table over there that inspire me on a weekly basis. I'll usually like pull three cards for myself and then keep them posted up so I can see them throughout the week. And then I'll also consult her guidebook. This um, goes a bit more in depth if I wanted to go deeper with the card meaning, but yeah. It says, fill your cup with sacred giggles. We have the creator cards. And you wouldn't think that just decks with just keywords would be like, you would be like, that doesn't evoke much because there's no fancy pictures. But really and truly, this deck is magical because it the keywords are actually really spot on. And the guidebook is where this deck really shines. And then you could just feel Chris Ann Donnelly's well wishes and good vibes coming through the deck, like wishing you the absolute best in your spiritual biz journey. So that's another reason why I'm like, I'm all over this deck. I love it. The edge of evolution feels messy. Ah, ain't that the truth? And yeah. She, she did a brilliant job. This is why Hay House picked it up because this was a brilliant deck that she created, this Oracle deck right here, okay? So I, I feel ridiculous that I did not add this as part of my top 10, but just, you, you heard it here, you heard it now, okay? <laughs> Sacred Creators Oracle, not to be missed. Check it out, especially if you are on a spiritual biz journey. It will help you, trust me. So the next Oracle decks I wanna talk about is the first and second edition that I combined and made into one deck. It is the White Rabbit Oracle. And there's it's 
one and two. So there's White Rabbit Oracle one and then White Rabbit Oracle two that I combine into one massive deck. Here's the card backs for um, White Rabbit Oracle one edition, card back for White Rabbit Oracle two. There are some overlapping keywords, but the, the meanings or the associated meanings for those keywords are different. And I just printed up a PDF copy of the guidebooks for both decks and have it ready. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a moment, but I love this deck. I've loved it for so many years. Many of you who have been following my channel know how much I love this deck. I usually use it for life purpose type of reading or New Year's opening oracle readings that I like to do. It shuffles like a dream. Look at that fruition. Look at that. Look at that. It shuffles like a dream. And I think it's in part because it is tarot size. And I just really appreciate the cardstock. I think you can get it on make playing cards, if I'm not mistaken. Um, both editions by Ariana Siegel. But yeah, I'll show you in a moment, mystery. I'll show you in a moment what I'm talking about in terms of what I did with the guidebook PDFs so you can see. Passion. And there's a passion in one and passion in two. I love the attachment card. So not all the, there's also new keywords that came up in um, the second edition. I keep it in this little pretty bag. Okay, let me show you the guidebook. Let me grab it off my shelf. Okay. My little guidebook is falling apart, y'all. I've had it for years, and I need to actually get it rebound. But it's spiral, <laughs> and the back is holding on by a thread. But I have the Oracle of Echoes in here as a PDF printout. And then I just was like, every time I got a new deck, I would print it. If it didn't come with a guidebook, I'd print the PDF and put it into my um, I put it into this book so here's the white rabbit oracle this is the first edition I wish that more guidebooks came in a spiral be like a spiral notebook bound book or whatever you want to call it because it's so easy it lays flat all right, you do like that. It could even be smaller, right? It could be a smaller book. But nevertheless, I understand that printing is a thing and you have to go with what makes sense in terms of cost, right? But I wish, my wish would be spiral or a means of the, the guidebook laying flat if it's not spiral. Then there's White Rabbit Oracle 2, possible card meanings. So I printed this up and kept it handy in case I needed to consult with it. And yeah, I love the White Rabbit Oracle. I have been loving it for years, for years. And it never disappoints. It works well in personal readings for myself or readings for others. And it just shuffles. I cannot... I'm all fumbling, but I cannot tell you, or I could just try to show you just how beautifully it shuffles. Here's discernment. Let's see if I can do a few more. Exploration. So it's very whimsical and dreamy, and it's got a little bit of a, I don't know, a magical element to it here celebrate I just I don't know I just really really enjoy the, this deck past lives follow your heart so yeah I decided to combine this deck into one and it served me well for years doing that sometimes I'll take if 
the first and second editions of a deck are the same size but have different card backs i don't mind the card backs i even sometimes play around with the different card backs like this could be present and future energy this could be present to past energy like for the you know the first edition versus the second edition is like present to future energy so you could play around with the card backs you don't have to and um yeah i like to combine the decks if i can note to creators like make it where your additions can be combined where you can use it um, in one massive deck because i do prefer to have a massive oracle it just is it astounds you even more when a particular card jumps to a question you're like wow that was out of how many cards in the deck and so it just it makes the magic even more like aha for me when i do readings so yeah that is the white rabbit oracle one and two so the last oracle deck i want to share with you is one of the ones that i created i keep it in this bag and it is my secrets revealed true crime oracle uh, i made this because i started a few years ago now doing mystery mystic readings my mystery mystic monday series and i was like i just wish i had a deck that had some keywords that really resonate with me like with what i'm seeing with what i pick up on so i just decided to make a deck and a few of you have bought it and i have was talking to one of my poised to leap members i am a mentor and coach over on kofi and I was talking with one of my members and I was like, wouldn't it be cool if I made a, an expansion pack for this deck that just deals with like conspiracy theories and then gangland activities and different types of ways. Cause I've already decided that I'm gonna take this massive 160 card deck and split it up into mini decks so people can mix and match the kind of true crime or conspiracy type of readings that they want to do together. So I want to make it like a little, you know, make it its own like little standalone expansion packs. But for now, you can get the 160 card massive deck on Make Playing Cards and it's off on my website if you're curious. I will have a link in the description box, but I start. I took a break from Mystery Mystic because I had a lot going on in my business and in my personal life, and I, you know, some things have to give, and what takes up a lot of emotional energy for me because I do care a lot about the cases that I cover. I had to take a step back, I had to take a breather, but now I'm getting my feet wet again with readings and using this deck has been very helpful in getting back into it. It's like I take breaks, not because I want to just be done with them forever, but because I need a break. I encourage people to take breaks when you are doing you know, readings for others or such readings as like what we cover in Mystery Mystic Monday or Maritime Mysteries even. Sometimes you need a break because it can be very heavy, dense energy and um, yeah, you, you need a break. So I do encourage people to take breaks because yeah, it can be very much on the system. We are still human beings <laughs> being able to tap into the other realms, but we're still dealing with our physical body. So we have to honor that. I enjoy making this deck so much and it always just surprises me in my readings that I do with it like ooh, how it just picks up on things it even will pick up on rumor and propaganda and all sorts of stuff that is like circling around a particular case and I appreciate that too because sometimes we all, even as readers, can get caught up in, you know, what is the story being spun? And that takes on a life of its own. It has its own energy. So we have to be very careful as we are discerning what we are picking up and looking at and all of that. So I appreciate that about this particular deck. And I do plan on doing a video in the near future where I go over all the decks that I have that I use for the purpose of Mystery Mystic Mondays and Maritime Mysteries. 
And then you'll see like what you will probably understand is that much of this deck is inspired by those decks. And I just end up making a massive one where I could just have one deck to go to. And it's this one, the one that I made for my readings. Yeah, so that is my Secrets Revealed True Crime Oracle. If you wanna see a full, full flip through, you can. The link will be in the description box. Uh, well, that's it, friends. That is my favorites video for the month of January. Let me know. Do you like month in review or monthly favorites or like February favorites or January favorites? Let me know in the comment section, too. I, I'd like to hear your opinion because I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really like sold on either one <laughs> and i'm curious to hear what you have to say let me know what you were loving on in january the decks crystals even incense um anything that that really helped you in your reading experience share it in the comment section down below and um, also let me know how you're doing if you are embarking on a depth here share with that too because i'm doing that as well and what moon phase are you in in your collection journey all right friends do me a favor on your way out please don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe subscribe join the abundant life to row family i'm feeling all reinvigorated and inspired i think it's because my birthday's coming up in february so i'm feeling like this uh, this push to create so stay tuned there's more all right, friends, take very good care of yourselves. I'll see you all around in the next one.